Today on Ortho 2, we are going to be talking about Allosaurus. It lived 150 million years ago in the late Jurassic and it was a fearsome predator. Individuals could be up to 40 feet long and were equipped with deadly killing tools. The name Allosaurus means different lizard, alluding to its unique concave vertebrae. Before we talk about how awesome this animal was, let's talk about its family first. Allosaurus is part of the family Allosauridae. Allosauridae is a family of medium to large bipedal dinosaurs. It is one of the four main families of Carnosauria. Their anatomy is typical of other neotheropod dinosaurs. Because of this, it is quite hard to define the family's membership. A typical allosaurid specimen has about 5 teeth in the premaxilla and 16 teeth in the maxilla. The dentary also has 16 teeth. Allosaurid teeth are serrated and continually replaced throughout their lives. Their skulls also bear crests that have keratin sheaths. Another aspect that characterizes these dinosaurs is their 28 caudral vertebrae and an estimated 50 caudal vertebrae. In all allosaurids, the pubis is highly elongated and extends ventrally to form a pubic foot which like in other large dinosaurs is thought to have been used to support the weight of the body in a crouching position. I find this fact very interesting. Just imagine a predator as big as an allosaurid crouching. They also had relatively short forelimbs and three digits on each hand. One of these digits forms a semi-opposable thumb. It seems the arms of this group have played a large role in their hunting strategy. Allosaurus itself evolved about 155 million years ago in the late Jurassic. It was a typical theropod predator, massive skull, short neck, long tail, and reduced forelimbs. The best known species, Allosaurus fragilis, was 8.5 meters or 28 feet in length. The largest confirmed specimen was 9.7 or 32 feet long, but some specimens have been up to 40 feet long. Weight estimates are debatable, but it is thought to have been anywhere from 1,000 to 4,000 kilograms, or 2,200 or 8,800 pounds. It is likely that the average Allosaurus fragilis would have been around 700 kilograms or 1,500 pounds. That means an average specimen would only weigh as much as a large polar bear. Very interesting to put its size into perspective. Even a large Allosaurus would only weigh about as much as a hippopotamus. Allosaurus was not a giant compared to other large theropods. Rather, it was more of a medium-sized predator for its time. Several gigantic specimens have been found, but they might belong to a different genera. The closely related genus Sorophaganax reached lengths of over 10 meters or 40 feet. It seems there are still a lot of discoveries to be made in regards to the Allosaurid family. Though the skull was large, it was proportionate to a theropod of its size. Its jaws were full of deadly serrated teeth. They are about 4 inches long, but this is pretty small for a theropod of this size. Also, it did not have that many teeth. It only had about 16 in its lower and upper jaw. These teeth could easily tear through flesh. Just like sharks, Allosaurus constantly grew and shed teeth. Since there are so many teeth being grown and falling out, it is possible to buy Allosaurus teeth for reasonable prices. Something unique about this theropod was its weak bite force. Biochemical studies revealed that the bite force of an Allosaurus was less than lions or even leopards. The calculations estimated a maximum bite force of about 2100 newtons, while a leopard exceeds it by about 200 newtons. Although it had a weak bite force, it was found that the upper jaw could withstand a force of up to 50,000 newtons. This is very interesting and may give us a hint about its lifestyle. A popular theory is that it would use its skull like a hatchet to kill prey. It was also found that it could open its jaw very wide. With these two characteristics, it could slam its head into large prey and drag its teeth through its flesh. The skull was light and strong. It could attack quickly against small prey and it was strong enough to handle the forces from attacking much larger prey. The skull also had a pair of horns right above the eyes. These horns were composed of extensions of the skull and were likely covered in a keratin covering. They were probably used for a number of things like display, possible combat, and my favorite theory, sunshades. 
They were right above the eyes and would have blocked the sun from entering the eye. I find that very interesting if it was actually one of the uses of these horns. The forelimbs of Allosaurus were short and only about 35% the length of the hind limbs, but were rather large in comparison to other theropod species. Each arm was equipped with three strong and sharp claws. They would have been used for gripping and possibly slashing prey. The innermost finger or its thumb was the largest and most powerful. Its foot claws were not anything special and likely were just for locomotion. Paleontologists accept that Allosaurus was an active predator of large animals. There is an abundance of evidence to show its terrifying attacks. There is a neck plate that belonged to Stegosaurus that had a U-shaped bite mark that was attributed to Allosaurus. There is also evidence that it either preyed upon or scavenged sauropods. It had relatively small teeth so it would have been very hard to take down a sauropod but it may have hunted them in packs. We have no evidence to support that they hunted in packs so this is just pure speculation. There is a correlation between weak bite forces and strong necks being used to take down large prey, but this is mainly speculation in regards to Allosaurus. If it did want to take down a sauropod, it may have gotten together with a few of its friends and hunted young or weak individuals like modern wolves, chasing the prey and biting them until they die of exhaustion or blood loss. I can just imagine an Allosaurus dragging its teeth across the back of a large animal. Sounds terrifying. Since the skull was relatively light, it was able to make quick bites on ornithopods or strong attacks on stegosaurids or sauropods. Another terrifying attack strategy it may have used has been referred to as flesh grazing. This feeding method would have entailed taking bites out of large animals like sauropods. No need to actually kill the prey, rather just get a quick meal of meat. This would allow it to feed itself without being at risk of injury from the animal it's attacking. It is not proven that they did this, but imagine how brutal that would be. Ornithopods were likely the most common prey for Allosaurus. They likely hunted them like big cats. They would ambush them and grab them with their strong arms and subdue them. They even may have bit the throat of these ornithopods and killed them that way just like modern cats. This is perhaps one of the reasons some have made the comparison between Allosaurus and modern day lions. Another interesting thing about Allosaurus is that it is estimated they could go up to about 25 years of age. It is hard to calculate how old an animal can live from fossils, but it is thought that it reached adulthood by the age of 15 and lived for another about 10 to 15 years after that. Like previously mentioned, Allosaurus was able to support its body while sitting. It may have used this behavior to sit on its eggs and keep them warm and defend them from predators. While thinking about Allosaurus sitting on its eggs, I asked myself, how long would it have to guard its eggs before they hatched? From what I have read, it would take about three to six months for a dinosaur egg to hatch. That is a mighty long time for something to go wrong. I can imagine there are plenty of other animals in the Mesozoic that would make a living just by eating dino eggs unless they were guarded. Interesting to speculate about the behavior of animals this old. Now let's talk about the possibility of Allosaurus having feathers. This will be quite short because we really don't know much. We do have evidence of scales on the torso of Allosaurus, but this doesn't rule out any feathers or fibers being on the animal. It is likely that it had some form of proto feathers on its body somewhere. Well, I think that's all I have to say about Allosaurus, but I have other things to say. First, look at this comparison between the foot of a T-Rex and the foot of an emu. Birds are dinosaurs, so we shouldn't be too surprised, but wow, that is cool. Another big bird like an emu are cassowaries. They have very similar feet to emus, but they also have a very long claw on their feet. This claw has given them the reputation of being the most dangerous bird in the world. Their inner toe claws can be 4 inches long and very sharp. They can use this claw to stab and slice their victims. They're not carnivores, but they will use it to defend themselves. A man in Florida of all places, let's call him Florida Man, was unfortunately killed by a cassowary last year. Cassowaries can grow to 5 feet tall and weigh up to 160 pounds. 160 pounds! That is terrifying. Apparently they can also jump 7 feet into the air. Imagine one chasing you down and then jumping 7 feet into the air just to come down and disembowel you. 
Cassowaries might be one of the scariest animals to me. Also, I want to show you a picture of my most recent ceramics project. This is a raptor of some kind with a nearly complete set of feathers. This is a raptor of some kind with a nearly full covering of feathers. I put a lot more detail into this than usual and hopefully it'll look great after I glaze it. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment down below to let me know how you like this outro thing I did. I got off topic, but maybe it was entertaining. Should I do this more often? Just add in some like more cool facts and uh, maybe what I've been working on? I don't know. Uh, just leave a comment down below. I'll see you guys in the next episode of North O2. See ya.